Have you ever passed by a construction site or a garage and caught a glimpse of an electric blue burst of light so bright, so intense, that you almost felt like you had to shield your eyes? That's welding. And if you've ever tried to look directly at it, even for a split second, you probably realize why welders wear those dark helmets. It's not just for style. The light coming off a welding arc is seriously bright, so much so that it can cause burns and even temporary blindness if you're not careful. But have you ever stopped to ask, why does welding produce such an insanely bright light in the first place? It's not just fire or sparks. This is something deeper, something far more energetic. Let's explore what's really going on behind that blinding glow, right here on History of Simple Things. Welding, at its core, is the process of joining two pieces of metal together by melting their edges so they fuse into one. To do that, you need serious heat, thousands of degrees Celsius in many cases. That extreme temperature is achieved using an electric arc, which is basically a controlled lightning bolt between the welding electrode and the workpiece. The electricity jumps across a gap, creating a superheated channel of ionized gas called plasma. This arc not only melts the metal, it also emits a spectrum of electromagnetic radiation, from visible light to ultraviolet, UV, and infrared, IR. The visible portion is what we see as that piercing bluish-white light, but that's just a tiny slice of what's actually being released. The intensity of the light produced during welding isn't just about temperature. It's also about the nature of plasma and high-energy electrons. When atoms in the air or in the welding material are excited by heat or by the arc's energy, their electrons jump to higher energy levels. But what goes up must come down. And when those electrons drop back to their original state, they release energy in the form of photons, a.k.a. light. This process happens millions of times per second and across a whole range of wavelengths. That's why welding arcs emit such broad-spectrum radiation. Some of it is visible to our eyes, and that's what makes it look so bright. But a large portion is UV and IR, which we can't see, but our skin and eyes can definitely feel. Ever had a sunburn from being near welding for too long without protection? That's the invisible part doing its work. One of the most dangerous and least talked about aspects of welding light is ultraviolet radiation. There are three types of UV rays, UVA, UVB, and UVC. The arc produced during welding can emit all three. In fact, the UVC radiation from welding arcs is some of the strongest man-made UV exposure you can get outside a laboratory. And it's not just dangerous to your skin, it can seriously mess up your eyes too. That's why welders can suffer from something called arc eye, or welder's flash, which is essentially a sunburn on the surface of the eyeball. It's painful, feels like there's sand in your eyes, and can last for days. This is also why even nearby bystanders, if unprotected, can experience these effects just by looking at a welding arc from across the room. Ever wonder why the light from welding isn't orange or red like a campfire? That's because the color of light is directly related to temperature. The higher the temperature of the light source, the shorter the wavelength of the light it emits. At lower temps, like in a candle flame, we get red and orange hues. But welding arcs can reach temperatures of over 5,000 degrees Celsius. And that's just the start. In those conditions, the visible light shifts toward the blue and violet end of the spectrum. Blue light is more energetic than red light, and that's why the arc has that intense bluish-white glow. It's essentially a fingerprint of the searing heat that's being unleashed in that tiny space between the metal and the torch. Not all welding processes are created equal when it comes to light output. TIG welding, Tungsten inert gas produces a very sharp, bright arc with a high concentration of UV radiation. MIG welding, 
metal inert gas, on the other hand, emits slightly less intense light, but still enough to cause damage. Then there's stick welding, or shielded metal arc welding, which produces a lot of light, but also heavy smoke and spatter. Each method has its own visual signature, but all of them emit a dangerous amount of radiation. That's why, regardless of the type, welding should always be approached with proper eye and skin protection, not just for the welder, but for anyone nearby. That brings us to the iconic welding helmet. It's not just a fashion statement, it's a necessity. These helmets come equipped with a dark lens filter that blocks out the harmful parts of the light spectrum. Auto darkening helmets have sensors that detect when the arc is struck and instantly darken the lens to protect the welder's eyes. These lenses are specially designed to block UV and IR radiation whether or not the lens is darkened. The helmets also protect the face and neck from radiant heat and sparks. Gloves, jackets, and even flame-resistant aprons all play a role in shielding the welder from the bright and dangerous byproducts of their work. Because as beautiful as that glow might look from a distance, up close, it's unforgiving. Welding light is more than just a bright spot in a dark room. It's a sign of intense physical change, of metal being melted, atoms being ripped apart, and electrons jumping around like fireworks. It's a natural consequence of the incredible heat and energy being unleashed to permanently bond two pieces of metal. And while it's certainly dazzling to look at, it's also a reminder of how powerful and potentially harmful this light can be. The brilliance of welding is a byproduct of science and heat working in harmony. But without the right respect for that power, especially when it comes to eye and skin safety, it can leave you with some very painful consequences. So the next time you see that flash of blue and white from across the street, remember, you're watching the light of a miniature star being born right here on Earth. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.